morning. I um, want to discuss dehydration a little bit. Um, when you have little puppies, it doesn't take much for a little puppy to get dehydrated and then they can die pretty quickly. Um, so what you want to watch for is if the puppy has diarrhea, um, vomiting, excessive fever, or if they've over ate where they've got the white poop. Um, that can cause, all those things can cause dehydration. And some of the signs to look for if the puppies are dehydrated is this puppy's a little dehydrated and I need um, to give him some fluids tonight. One of the signs to watch for in the puppy is you pull the fur up on the back of the neck here and if the fur stays up like that or it's not going right back down, that's the sign that the puppy needs to have a little bit of fluids in it. The fur should look like this one where you pull it up right here and it goes right back down. It doesn't stay up like the other one did. Another sign to look for if the puppies are dehydrated is sticky tongue or sticky gums. Um, and one of the signs that you can tell if their tongue is sticky is they'll maybe making noises like like that because their, their tongues are sticky. Um, their tongue can also stick to the roof of their mouth and um, if that happens and you don't catch that, then you think that they're nursing and they're not really nursing because the tongue's in the wrong spot and they're not really getting any food. Which also brings me to the thing that you need to be weighing your puppies a couple times a day. Um, that's another sign if the puppies start losing weight then you there's something going on. Um, it's either dehydration or the puppy's sick or it's not getting enough food, it's not really nursing. This puppy is about 10 days old and I'm still weighing her because she's not gaining weight as fast as the other puppies in the litter. And so to weigh her, I get this, um, it's a food scale and I got it at Walmart for about 20 bucks. And then I get this little container and I have a little um, soft spot in there for her. And I turn it on after this is on it so it'll zero out. It'll weigh that and it'll be on zero here. And then I put the puppy in there and hope she holds still so I can get an accurate reading. And she's about 10 ounces, 10.7 ounces. And then I keep track of it by writing it down on a daily log on how much she weighs. And then if she doesn't gain weight, or she stays the same, I know there might be an issue. And one of the things is she's got a little bit of diarrhea, and so, and she's getting a little dehydrated from the diarrhea. So I pull the fur up on the back of her neck. She's not wanting to hold still for me. Here. Yes, he's a sweetie. Okay, pull the fur up, and it kind of stays up a little bit like that. That means she's dehydrated. So I need to give her more fluids. And we're going to show you how to give fluids here in just a minute. Okay, this is uh, for the giving the puppy fluids under the skin because she's dehydrated. Um, this is a, just a regular IV bag, but um, this is a 0.9% sodium chloride injection. It says injection after it, and it does have electrolytes in it. It's not as great as the um, lactate ringers. The lactate ringers has more in it, but my vet recommended this one because it wouldn't be as irritable to the puppy. Um, so normally you would warm up the whole bag and some hot water um, before you start doing a drip in the, you know, you'd hook it up through here to give some to the puppy. However, um, I'm only giving a little bit to the puppy and I'm not doing a continuous drip on her. So what I do, and I'm not sure that this is what they recommend, but I'm very careful when I do it, is I get a little sterile container and I put some of the fluids in the container here. And then all I'm doing is warming up the little bit that I need to put in the puppy at the time I put it in her. And you want it to be, um, you're gonna, I'm going to show you how to check out the temperature, but it's just like doing a baby bottle. You're going to check it on your wrist to make sure it's not too hot but not too cold because you don't want to put cold fluids into your puppy. You want them to be 
as close as to their body temperature as you can get without, you don't want to burn them at all though. So you want to be real careful there. Okay, now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put it in the microwave for like six seconds and then test it. Okay. I got a brand new needle on here and I'm going to draw up a little bit and I'm going to test it on my wrist first. Just a tiny little bit. I'm going to test it on my wrist. And that's not quite warm enough. So I'm going to stick it back in the microwave for about three more seconds. Okay, I'm going to check this again before I before I draw it up for the puppy. And you want to check it on your wrist, just a little bit on your wrist, just like you would a baby bottle. And that feels pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it up into the syringe here. And I, every, you want to check with your vet on how much you want to give them. Um, I'm doing four, four mLs and my puppy weighs almost 11 ounces um, but you want to check with your vet because I think it depends on the severity on how much you want to give them um, and every vet recommends a little bit different. Okay one thing I want to make sure is when you heat this up in the microwave it can have hot spots so make sure you stir it up before you draw it into the syringe and that way you don't have hot spots and it's all the same temperature. And Once you get it in here just snap it a little bit to get all the bubbles up there um, to the top and then push it up until you see it squirt out the top like that so then you don't have all that air going into underneath the skin. This is only going to go under the skin in the back of the at the neck of the puppy or in the side where we can pull up a little bit of skin. You do not want this to go into any veins, any muscle, anything at all. Just under the skin is all you're going to do with this. We're going to take a cotton ball with uh, rubbing alcohol and you want to swab it on the back where you're going to put the needle to get it clean and then you're going to pull the fur up like that and you're going to stick the needle right in there and I can't really do it with one hand so I gotta have help here 